hi welcome back in our previous session we have already covered how to load the data from file storage to sql database once our data is loaded to sql database we can prepare our data or transform our data using azure databricks so let's create a azure databrick Here I can type as data brick, Azure data brick. Let me create a new one. This is the resource group we have created in the previous session. Workspace, we'll create a Azure data brick workspace. we will create a single workspace in a in a single workspace multiple team member can work these all things i am keeping as default it is validating the deployment is started Databrick deployment will take some time to be completed. Databrick is a very powerful tool. Our resource is created. Let's go to the resource. We can see the Databrick details here and down we can see the launch workspace option we can launch the workspace when we will launch the workspace it will open a new window for us so this is our databrick home page here we will create a databrick cluster and a databrick notebook so every notebook should be attached to a cluster because without a cluster we cannot process a notebook let's create a cluster first here let me give a cluster name cluster mode i'm taking standard and uh, here we have option of uh, enabling auto scaling and the terminate after in the auto enable auto scaling when we will do the enable auto scaling uh, we have a option here the minimum worker node and the maximum worker node we can change the value also when it is a auto enable auto auto scaling and uh, we will process any notebook it will process within the two to eight work node or whatever number we will give here it will be processed within that uh, worker node range and if we are deselecting the enable auto scaling whatever worker node we will define here our notebook will be processed within that worker node then terminate after we can give a time here here it is 120 minutes given or i can change it to 80 minutes so it is when no one is using the cluster then the cluster will automatically shut down it will not be deleted from the account it will just shut down to save the cost so once all these details are filled we can create the cluster so the cluster creation this is how we can create a cluster let me create a notebook in another window till the time the cluster is created we can create a notebook let's create a notebook we'll give a notebook name We can give any language, Python, Scala, 
SQL are these four languages are supported by Azure Databricks. So I am choosing SQL and this is the cluster name which we have created. Create it. So once the notebook is created, we can write the code here to calculate our uh, to perform our calculations. So this is how we can create the cluster and notebook. Let's create a Azure Synapse database. Azure Synapse database is very much similar to our SQL data warehouse. So let me create a Azure Synapse database. The subscription and the resource group are selected. We'll give a SQL pool name that is the data warehouse name. The server is selected. This is the same server in which we have created our SQL database. Performance label. This performance label, whatever we will configure, that will affect the cost. So for this demo purpose, I am taking the minimum configuration. Next is the networking. Next additional setting. Here it is asking me which data I will use as we have not loaded any proper data to create our data warehouse. So let me take the sample data. This sample data will refer to the Azure work adventure work data warehouse. So let's create it. So it is initialized. It will take some time to be deployed. Our SQL data warehouse is created. Go to the resource. Here we can see the details of the Synapse DB. Let's connect to the Synapse database. Synapse database is created. These are the database details. Let me connect to the Synapse DB from Management Studio. I will take the server name. password and uh, my database name connect It is connected to the Synapse database. This is our data warehouse. If I will expand, I can see the tables, the dimensions and the facts tables are here. So using this dimension and fact, I can design my data warehouse. And let's create a Synapse analytic workspace. Add a workspace. Resource group will select workspace name. Region is the default account name. And the file system name. Next, next, here we need to give uh, the password also. Mm -hmm. 
नेक्स्ट क्रिएट deployment is started from for the synapse analytic database A synapse analytic workspace is created let's uh, open the workspace we can see the workspace details here and uh, using this workspace web url we can open the workspace in another window this is the synapse analytic workspace here we can ingest the data and we can do the analytics also whatever uh, uh, data warehouse is created and uh, this is for the visualization we can use any kind of uh, cloud visualization tool like power bi or anything else so we can create our dashboards or reports or any kind of visualization and we can publish them to web portal and we can link them in the azure synapse analytic workspace so this is how we can create a azure data warehouse solution so to understand from the beginning you can watch the previous session also in my next video i will be create i will be <coughs> giving session on some azure data factory live scenario because i uh, received some request from the users that i should create some videos on azure data factory activities and some transformations so i thought i will create some live scenario examples where we can understand some live scenario concepts as well as i can cover some azure data factory um, activities and transformations so to watch our latest videos you can subscribe to our channel Thank you for watching.